Hello, my friends. Welcome to my channel. I am so happy to be able to keep sharing with you my experience, my dreams, but also my struggles, my difficulties, all these things that we can share and help each other to grow, to be transformed. That's what I like to call this. So this is like a self-reflection on this journey since I started posting actively on this channel as a former priest, but also as a person that had to work every day, that struggles every day, someone that had learned a lot, someone that also had to go to school for a, some period of time, for a long period of time, and had learned some basic things, spiritual things, psychological things, have kind of authority to speak about some situations. But today is a self-reflection. I have asked so many of you to give me some feedback of how uh, I'm doing, what the things that I need to change. But this is like a mixed feelings because I encounter very sincere feedback. People that want to hear a specific topics on here, but also some kind of rejection. And that's something that I want to focus today. So people are afraid when you think differently when you feel differently, when you believe differently, and when you act differently and do things differently, when you think out of the box. It scares people because it makes people feel uncomfortable, unease. They experience anxiety. Some of them see you like an enemy. We are suspicious they see you that you don't belong. And you know how many people are getting frustrated in the world because they don't feel that they belong? It is frightening, isn't it? Since the time I had been actively involved in my channel, I had been getting all kinds of phone calls and text messages. Some of them to encourage me to continue what I am doing, others to warn me, others to ask me for explanations others to ask me not to do it what I am doing. I, because I am not the person that I used to be, etc., etc. The bottom line, I have made some people uncomfortable, which that's okay. Some of you know my philosophy. If you don't like it, deal with it. Because if you feel uncomfortable, that means that I am doing my job taking people out of the comfort zone. That is good. When I started this project, I said, first of all, this is not a place for a public confession. And second of all, I said, we are going to treat each other with respect, which is something that I would like to say that I had been doing. But looking at this, it take me to a different conclusion and reflection. Do you remember the story of the woman in the gospel caught in adultery in uh, John chapter 7, 53, 8 to 11. So it brought, they brought her to Jesus. And who are they? Well, they are the scribes and the Pharisees. Let's say they are the people who knew the law. They were the people who, went, who were going to the cult every day or every Sunday or to go to church every every Sunday. See, they knew the law. They not only wanted to bring her to, Jesus, to justice, but wanted to test Jesus about this matter. However, Jesus loves to break paradigms. He loves to think out the box. He likes to make people think differently. He's not worried about the institution or the, the Judaism institution or the Mosaic law. He knew the law. He came to perfect and to give fulfillment to the law. He is concerned about changing people's heart. He is, in this case, to change the adulterous woman. It doesn't matter what sin they have committed in this case. It doesn't matter who was she caught in adultery with, which, you know, we never hear in this story the man that was with her. 
We never hear that. They brought the woman, just her. Maybe one of the accusers were one of the guys too. I don't know. This is not doctrine. This is just me thinking. So Jesus dared them to throw the stone at her if they were innocent. Jesus dared them to throw a stone to the woman if they were innocent. What happened? They start putting away, going away, because they were not one innocent in the crowd. So Jesus, standing in front of the woman, gave her back her dignity, sent her free, sent her away free. Of course, he gave her a warning. No, sin no more. Go and sin no more. And sometimes we forget. Sometimes when the priest, especially with the Catholic Church, when the priest says sin no more, I think we heard go and sin more because sometimes we hear from this ear and go out for this one and I am the first one. So I'm guilty of that one. So, but the thing here is how do you, you, identify with this story are you the woman caught in adultery with shame and embarrassment afraid knowing that she might die because of her sins are you part of the crowd wanted to stone her pouring jesus into test thinking that you are better than everybody else because you know the law and because you are coming Uh, from an institution knowing everything, thinking that you know everything? Are you, Jesus, thinking out the bus, sending her free without judgment? What I'm saying, are we, Jesus, in society, sending people free with dignity? Or do we feel better than other people because we are able to recite part of the scriptures because we go to church every weekend? Well, let me tell you with who I do identify with in this story. I am the woman caught in adultery like many other people. But that there are a ton of difference between her and I. Jesus forgave the woman and the accuser, accusers left the scene. Jesus forgave me, but many of you are still throwing stones and stones to me. He did not happen. It did not happen with the woman. You fall in love with the priest, but you never fall in love with Carlos, the human one. And Jesus fell in love with the sinful woman and sent her free. Jesus restored my dignity and forgot my sins, but many of you are still accusing me, afraid because I see things from a different perspective, afraid because I might say something bad against the church, which some of you have said that to me. Some of you care more about the institution than the person. Sometimes we forget that the church is made by people, not by a building and not by stones. We are the living stones that are humans and made mistakes. And Jesus keeps sending us afraid, free, but you don't. We still time people up with chuckles. And we just go down with people because we don't like the word I forgive you. We don't like the word when we say, please forgive me, I screwed up. Yes, that is our case. You judge me forgetting that Jesus already forgave me. And that is not my only case. Some of my brothers and sisters get so afraid mixing with sinners because they are going to get contagious and forgetting that Jesus came and dined with sinners and impure and lepers. 
We are so afraid. It's like the flu or it's like the COVID-19 today. Oh, I am not going to go to that person because that person is sick and I might get the infection. Yes, you don't want to get along with me because, you know, I might infect you. Because I am a leper, I am impure, right? And we are so afraid about it. Yes, we stigmatize people sometimes in our own circles. But this is my favorite one. And I kind of laugh now about it. I used to get so insulted and angry about it. And they ask, they still call me Father Carlos, which that's okay for many of you probably won't. Is Father Carlos, how do you sin? Was it with a man or with a woman? Really? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? It's not your business. What's Jesus and my business? And he already took, that, took care of that. Some of them had a morbid mind. There are people who say that I left a woman pregnant. That I have a man in my life. That I have lovers. And this and that. Etc. <laughs> uh, Etc. Et I used to say to people, and I still say, if they don't know this story, they will create one, and probably they're gonna be wrong. Yes, they're gonna be wrong. So, some of you only wanted the facts. <laughs> I had the other day a conversation with someone that I used to call my friend, a priest friend, and he asked me, so what happened, Carlos? Can you tell me? So I start telling some of the, the facts of this story. So in the middle of this story, he said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm busy. I need to go and hang out and block me from the phone, from WhatsApp and from the phone. And I was just saying, yeah, so much for mercy. So much for the mercy that we preach in the church, that we preach and our retreats that we preach everywhere, but it doesn't apply. It seems sometimes that it doesn't apply to a fallen priest. Yes, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. It doesn't apply to fallen priests, but everybody else, right? It really, it breaks my heart. And sometimes I had to tell you that it makes me question my faith sometimes it does sometimes it made me question my preachings so many times that I stand up for mercy and love and forgiveness and compassion but looking back a month ago Sometimes I feel that that word didn't apply to me. Even coming from my own brothers. I preach mercy and I hear that word many times from the, from the pulpit. But honestly, I didn't experience that mercy from my brothers and sisters and from some of my closest friends. But I thank God, I had getting a lot of mercy from him. Many of these people forgot that I heard thousands of confessions, sending people free from their sins. I did hundreds of baptisms, hundreds of baptisms, restoring their dignity as sons and daughters of God. I officiate a lot of weddings, I change people's hearts, etc. Even if you forgot that, God had never forgotten. I will continue this revolution of love. I will continue it, spreading this word, words of hope, words of motivation. I will continue it saying what I think I need to say. I need to continue it 
to this revolution to be transformed. Thank you for listening. Thank you for inspiring. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for spreading this word. As always, stay healthy, be healthy and help someone to be healthy. See you soon.